Hello and welcome to the 2023 Division III Men's Tennis Selection Show. I'm your host, Will Haskett. The road to Orlando officially begins today with action right around the corner. First round play begins this coming Thursday and Friday, depending on which local site you're in. Three rounds of action coming up on tap this weekend, and those still standing by next Sunday will advance to the national quarterfinals beginning on May the 13th at the USTA National Campus. The champion will be crowned four days later in this unique year where all three divisions compete alongside each other. In this division, the postseason will begin with 44 teams, of which there are 35 conference champions earning automatic qualification. You know what that means. That's just nine precious at-large bids still to hand out. So who has earned those bids? How about the group of teams with buys to the second round or our hosts coming up for this first weekend? We discover all of that together as we dive into the bracket. And the first of our eight hosts to unveil here in 2023 is Tufts. Yes, the Jumbos returned to the tournament last year after an 18-year absence, falling 5-4 to four to eventual champion UChicago in a very tight semifinal. This year, the big question is, can they make the finals? You would expect to see this team near the end. They await the winner of Baruch for the fifth straight year, champions of the Cunyak earning the program's 11th tournament berth. The Bearcats won 5-0, adding the 16th conference title in program history. That's more than any other school in the conference. The other First round opponent there is Farmingdale State veteran leadership pulling the program into its fifth NCAA tournament, winning the Skyline Conference for the second time in three years. They upset Manhattanville in the championship. Mark Baker, tournament MVP in 2019. He became the fourth player to earn MVP honors a second time by winning it this year. It seems like a long time between MVP awards, but a great career capped off with Baker earning MVP this year in that Skyline Conference. Straight to the second round for Swarthmore. What a season it has been for the Garnet, who returned to the tournament for the first time since 2007. Centennial Conference champions for the first time. They did it by ending a 14-year championship run of Johns Hopkins. Michael Melnikov was awarded tournament most valuable player, picking up a pair of victories in singles and doubles. He looks to lead the Garnet to their fifth national championship, the last coming all the way back in 1990. And their first opponent will be MIT, the Engineers. The second seed, but avenged a regular season loss to top-seeded Babson with a 5-3 victory over the Beavers in the Numac Men's Tennis Championship. MIT's 23rd championship since 1999. That is a stunning run of dominance. All right, our next group is headlined by Emory, which will receive a bye to the second round. The Eagles looking for that seventh national title to join Kalamazoo and UC Santa Cruz atop the list of most national championships ever. A big 5-0 sweep over reigning champion U Chicago claimed third in the UAA championship. It's really something to build upon going into this NCAA tournament. Ryan Glanville and Charlie James, the top ranked doubles duo in the region. St. Mary's of Maryland dances into the first round. Back-to-back -back champs of the United East. The Seahawks return to the tournament after the debut last season and fresh off a 5-0 sweep in the title match. And they take on Drew, second landmark conference title in the last three years. Thanks to MVP of the tournament, Leo Ambrosio, he rallied from 6-2 losing the first set, 7-5, 6-4 in sets 2-3 and three to win at number three singles. That clinched the match for the top-seeded Rangers. The host for this site is NC Wesleyan. 14th straight USA South title brings the Bishops back yet again, where they will face off against Washington and Lee. Pure domination of the ODAC for the Generals, who have won 13 straight conference titles and an astonishing 41 overall. The 1988 national champs are led by Evan Erb on the number one court in both doubles and singles. He ranks top 10 in both in the region. Third local site is hosted by powerhouse Wash U. Winners of seven of nine matches coming in. The Bears have had wins this season that make them a championship threat, including twice over reigning champions U Chicago. The 2008 national champions earn an at-large berth for their 24th tournament appearance. They host a first round battle that starts with Carthage for the first time since 2016. The Firebirds, champions of the CCIW, avenging a loss to North Central in the championship showdown from a season ago. Francisco Silvera has been a huge addition this year, earning conference first year player of the year. He got a critical late singles point and teams with Cooper Ferruzzi in doubles, where they've gone 17 and three in flight two this season. Covenant draws the Firebirds in round one. Congrats to the Scots who earn a first trip to the NCAA tournament, arriving tested this season with multiple matches against tournament teams. One of those teams is here as well at this site. Sewanee, the Tigers, back in the tournament for a 19th time after taking care of business in the Southern Athletic Association. The Tigers have Jordan Theron, who ranked the top singles player in the region in the most recent rankings. 
George Fox hopes to meet the Tigers in round number two. The Bruins earned a three-peat of the Northwest Conference with some strong doubles rallies. They were actually in danger of losing key points at the start of the championship match. But three Bruins duos all found a way to win tiebreakers in doubles. They took a commanding 3-0 lead, never looked back. And that doubles play always comes up key, especially with three points on the line here in Division Three. They'll try and set the tone against Greenville in the opening round. The Panthers got a taste of the tournament a season ago, but one trip was not enough. 5-1 win over Wisconsin Superior, securing the UMAC title and the automatic qualifier. All right, just four teams in our next site. They're all already in the second round, hosted by powerhouse Claremont Mud Scripps. Fourth straight Skyac title for the Stags. Have them primed for another deep run, which is what this program has done throughout its tournament history. They're the 2015 national champions, but they've been in the championship match in five of the last nine NCAA tournaments. And that would be impressive to most opponents, but maybe not when you're playing UC Santa Cruz. They have the resume that can certainly top it. 13 appearances in the championship match in program history, including seven national titles. It's hard to imagine a more decorated second round matchup than these two teams squaring off. Trinity, Texas here as well. 13 straight SCAC championships for the Tigers, who avenged a regular season loss against Southwestern to show who the champs continue to be. They got two points in doubles. That certainly helps. Strong singles wins at one and two allow the Tigers to pull away. And they will face Concordia of Texas in the second round. Champions of the American Southwest yet again. It marks titles in two of the last three seasons. The Tornadoes survived a thrilling championship against Hardin-Simmons. They were up 2-1 after doubles. Got a quick point from top singles player Joshua Bodie that would make it 3-1. He contributed two points in the championship en route to MVP honors. But it would be his doubles partner who is the hero, Adrian Mungia. He got the pivotal singles point for a dramatic win for Concordia. All right, so we are halfway through this bracket. Four sites unveiled, four still to go, 24 teams left to come off the board. We will unveil those and continue this Division Three men's tennis selection show right after this. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Welcome back to the 2023 Division III Men's Tennis Selection Show. We've unveiled half of the bracket, but still another 24 teams remain to be called. That includes four more local sites. So we dive right back into the bracket and a really entertaining site coming up this weekend. It begins with Middlebury. What a win on the NESCAC for the Panthers this season. Three-time national champions guaranteed themselves another tournament berth with a thrilling showdown against Bowdoin. They were down 2-1 after doubles. Middlebury would also be down 4-3 in singles. Robbie Ward knotted it up on court five, and then all eyes went back to the number one singles court. Noah Labor took care of business and secured the program's 20th NCAA appearance. We say hello to Christopher Newport for the first time since 2017, marking just the third NCAA berth for the program, facing off against Allegheny in the first round. 41 years after their last conference title, they returned back to the President's Athletic Conference and the Gators are champs of the pack again and earned the automatic berth of the tournament for the first NCAA tournament berth in program history. These matches hosted by Johns Hopkins, 17th appearance for the Blue Jays comes with an at-large berth. The Jays may go as far as their twins will take them. That would be the U brothers. Thomas U is top five in the region in singles. And he teams with his brother James and they rank third as a duo in the region in doubles. Rensselaer makes a trip to Hopkins as well, making it program history with the first back-to-back -back appearances in this NCAA tournament to meet Lebanon Valley in the opener. Nearly perfect in singles, the Dutchman rallied from 2-1 to one down by winning the first set in all six singles matches and capturing the MAC Commonwealth title in consecutive seasons. Next site includes a team that has been given fresh life in this bracket. We just mentioned them a minute ago. Bowden did enough in NESCAC play this year to not have their resume defined by that championship loss to Middlebury. They earn an at-large berth to arrive in the tournament for the 21st time. And they will scout Nichols in the first round. The Bison repeating as Commonwealth Coast Conference champions, earning the program's 13th title with a 5-0 sweep in the championship after being the top seed. Houghton will be the opponent, the Highlanders, capturing the Empire 8 championship for the second time in the last three seasons. 
Micah Schilke earning tournament MVP after earning a win at second doubles and clinching the point with a win at second singles. So will be another NESCAC team with hosting duties. The second buy at this site belongs to Williams, making its annual appearance. The four-time national champions always annually tested with Chase Cohen leading the way this year, top three singles and doubles player in the region. Stevens in town for the first round. A third straight Mac Freedom Championship came in a 5-0 sweep for another dominant run to the title. The Ducks haven't lost a championship match since joining the conference in the 2019-20 season. That means they've won 11 straight in the Mac Freedom postseason. They test that pedigree against Salem State to open things, returning to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2018 after capturing the Little East Conference as the top seed. Tournament MVP Andrew Mattia won in doubles and rolled at number one singles, 6-3-6 love in the clincher. All right, only 12 teams to go and a lot of strong programs still to reveal. So let's get our next host on the board. That would be Case Western. Is this the year that the Spartans get it done? National runner-ups each of the last two years, they enter fresh off the program's first UAA championship in somewhat dominant fashion. James Hopper is on the short list of best tennis players in the country. He won the doubles title a year ago at the national level. He has a new partner this year. He and Vishwa Aduru are the top doubles duo in their region, and Aduru got the clinching point at number two singles in that UAA championship match. They can try to steal some championship mojo from Kalamazoo. The seven-time national champs will make their 28th attempt at title number eight, having last won it all in 1993. The Hornets were down a point after doubles against Hope, but rallied to win the title and earn the 39th berth in program history. That's more than any other program. That's a big number for Ohio Northern to chase. Second straight OAC conference crown gives the Polar Bears back-to-back -back NCAA berths for the first time since 2011. Dennison earns the other bye here. Four straight NCAC titles for the Big Red, which won yet another battle with Kenyon for the conference's coveted AQ. Zachary Portnoy rallied after losing the first set in singles on court six to win the final two sets, the clinching point in a 5-3 win. Transylvania checks in next. Heartland Conference champions and tournament bound for the first time in 13 years. It was a thrilling 5-4 win for the Pioneers over Hanover, making the most of their first conference championship appearance in seven years. And Mary Washington will be the opponent. A 22nd tournament berth has the Eagles celebrating another crack at taking on the country's best. And on to our final site and our host, the champs. U Chicago headlines here, excuse me, not our host here, but the host will be playing host to U Chicago. The reigning champions had to sit on pins and needles today to hear their names called the Maroons losing in both the semifinals and the third place match of the UAA championship, putting their tournament hopes perhaps in jeopardy. The losses snapped a seven match winning streak that included three ranked opponents. Even with those tournament losses in the UAA, everybody knows what is possible with this team. Grinnell is here as well. The Pioneers showed their depth in the championship of the Midwest Conference, sweeping the doubles points and closing things out at four and five singles to make their 16th NCAA tournament, where they will face Luther in the opening round, third consecutive American Rivers championship for the Norse, who cruised to a 5-0 win in the tournament championship. They did not surrender a single point in either the semifinal or the championship. All right, now the actual host of these teams, Gustavus Adolphus. No program has more NCAA tournament appearances without a title than the Gusties. They earned their 35th berth with a 5-0 win in the Mayak championship. The Gusties were national runner-up twice a generation ago, but did not drop a completed match in any matchup in that conference tournament, so they are really strong and playing some of their best tennis coming in. Wisconsin Whitewater continues to add to the strength of this location in a battle of East and West in the end, Jack. The Warhawks were the better team, prevailing 5-2 to two to earn the conference's automatic berth and the school's 13th NCAA appearance. And they face the final team to unveil. Celebration still going on for the Raiders of MSOE. They made their first appearance back in 2010. They have not been back since, so we say welcome back to the tournament. All right, there you have it all, 44 teams still alive and in pursuit of a national championship. Those eight local sites have action serving it up later this week with the first three rounds all concluding coming up this weekend. And what a special opportunity it will be for the eight teams remaining as the quarter finalists will join the D3 women along with all the top teams across Division I and Division II in Orlando. The USTA National Campus will host all of the action with the D3 men's final taking place on May the 16th. Be sure to follow along with all of the action throughout the tournament and from Orlando here on NCA.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Will Haskett. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship.
there's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.